Hey, how's it going? It's Keith Townsend from the CTO Advisor. We're here at Interop with Eric. Eric Wright, Disco Posky on Twitter. We'll get into that whole <laughs> where the Twitter handle came back from one day. But introduce yourself, your day job title, and why are you at Interop? Aha, good question. Uh, yeah, so my name is Eric Wright. Uh, I'm the technology evangelist for Turbonomic. Uh, by day, uh, by night, I'm a blogger at discoposse.com. Uh, Twitter handle is at Disco Posse. Uh, and yeah, why Interop? I'm actually on the review board for Interop, which is pretty cool. I love I love this community. It's a very open community, not just open source in right. the OSCON way, but like actually open agnostic technologies. A uh, lot of traditional enterprise technology here. Yeah. It's, it's some open source. And it's also a neat merger of like business focused. So you've got like the CIO, the leadership track, and security, CTO, dip further down into the practitioner. It's a miracle we can actually pull this off with a handful of folks that are that are doing it, like the UBM team that does it great. So yeah. anyways, I've, I've been a part of Interop for, for five years now uh, as a presenter, as well as running some stuff. I'm doing a mentoring track here, uh, and I'm also the guy who drags everybody out on a 5K run. Yeah, my, morning, my so. legs are crying. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm still hurting from that nine and a half minute pace. So... Eric, I got you on because I got into a really interesting debate on LinkedIn about monolithic applications. You guys at Turbonomics do a lot of workload optimization, knowing where to put workloads. We were talking off camera about the Netflix story about how they took their Java applications, put them into containers, and then got great optimization from EC2. That sounds like an infrastructure-led offering what's your opinion just looking at netflix and then looking at the average enterprise and saying you know what is that a legit approach to take monolithic applications and cram them into containers right yeah it's a great question and you can clearly see there's two camps right up uh, uh the advocate for the cloud native focus is going to say it's a terrible idea right not unlike we would look back and say the p2v's are now a terrible idea. However, it was our path to virtualization. So if I look at monolithic apps and containers, again, what's the actual goal we're trying to achieve? Do we want to get to cloud native or do you want to get to a new construct on which you can adopt new practices? And I can tell you, hands down in the hundreds of enterprises that I talk to, that's the right path. It's not the well, say it's the appropriate path. It's maybe not be the right path. Right, the right path is to refactor, to be a, build, build right, microservices, right, right. services, blah blah blah. blah. Yes. Yeah. So, while I understand where there's resistance to that as a as a method to think about what you're achieving by doing it, you're moving further up the stack. You're abstracting away the IaaS layer to containerization. And who's to say that maybe that's not where we're going to go down the road? We tried it with, you know, OpenStack, and it was like, no one wanted to use OpenStack because they didn't have live migration. And those folks, enterprise consumers, got browbeaten by the open source community yes. saying, you should just develop your apps to be resilient at the application layer. But what if you have a thousand applications? And you see that. I mean, look at the customers and folks that you talk to. It's a different scale. I mean, Netflix is funny, of course, because they have one app. You know, obviously, there's a lot of other things, and they, they write their full stack. But hey, if Netflix is doing it, there's a reason. Because maybe they couldn't get to the refactor early, but what they did need was to be able to run multi-cloud. Great. I could potentially you know, start, restart, respawn this and then again, it's like you've moved the construct into something that now you administer and operate differently. And then you develop against the new pattern. And, and that's really what it is. So I agree, it's the pattern adoption that was the win. The fact that they're running a monolith, hey look, not the best approach. Not the best approach, but... What was the alternative? The exactly. alternative is spend seven months, four developers refactoring an application that maybe doesn't actually need to be a uh, cloud native application. Uh, there's actually a uh, Randy Schaup. Uh, if you follow Randy on Twitter, he's Randy S H O U P. Uh, he's uh, he's phenomenal, you know. And he talks. He's got great long form blogs as well about why microservices is a terrible idea for a lot of your apps. Mm. Because 
it, it's a it's an anti pattern to a lot of particular applications. Why would I take an application that gets used three four times a week that gets updated once a year? Why why would I refactor that and spend engineering effort? Just let it live in a container, wrong running VM, whatever. And I think one of the pushbacks that I'm hearing from the DevOps community that, you know what, getting a Java app per se to run inside of the container is just, it's not worth the trouble. But I don't know, Netflix put out some numbers that were really impressive. They reduced their EC2 costs significantly by just taking containers and using containers more, uh, uh, using EC2 instances more efficiently. I don't know, opinions on that at all? I, I agree. You know, I think that's that's the right. I hate to make this a, a just a, a bunch of violent agreements on things, <laughs> but but it, it's true. And and why do I agree? Because again, what is the pattern that they've adopted, which is appropriate? And we talked, uh, we've talked before as well, you and I, and, and a lot of folks about you know low density virtualization. Why would you do low density virtualization? Because the practice you've adopted means common administrative practice across every virtualization host. Why run a container on a VM? Again, I've, I get screamed at continuously yeah. about, you know, why would you do that? Because if I've got all these orchestration practices around patch management and all this stuff for that underlayer, then let well, it live. Let, let it live. It, it, it works fine. I'm not trying to build a race car with containers. Containers is about portability. For a lot of enterprises, containers is about packaging app cross uh, or multi-cloud uh, portability and efficiency. So, you know, it's, it's, it's and then of course CI/CD, and then the ability to get to a point where I've refactored applications that are, that's appropriate. Right, and, and if you look at, you know, again, con what were the original containers that are typically they were deployed, like ECS is on EC2. So you're deploying an EC2 instance, it puts containers on top of it. Now we're obviously getting into native, you know, we've got EKS, you've got Fargate, you've got the Kubernetes orchestration layers. But again, it's like, because you containerize that app, you can now have complete freedom as to where you're gonna land it versus it's a wrapper for a VMware or a Hyper-V or a, a Rev installation. So move it to the container and whether you need to or not, you've immediately made it portable. And at that point, now you can do, is it appropriate to do this next thing, which is refactor, where should it live? And I can see, I can tell you hands down, the performance inside containers versus performance inside VMs is provably good. So, you heard it from the word of a person whose job is to optimize workloads, put them on the most cost-effective platform for the workload. Where can people find out about Turbonomics? Uh, yeah, so it's easy to go to turbonomic.com, uh, and uh, we actually just had a, a release uh, very recently. I'll say recently because it was a few hours ago from when we're talking, depending on when they, they watched us now. And and uh, yeah, so being able to do uh, stuff in in cloud on premises, it's it's pretty cool. So definitely uh, encourage folks. You can reach out to me as well. It's uh, at Disco Posse on Twitter. Uh, connect on LinkedIn as well. I'm just search for Eric Wright Disco Posse. There's only one Disco Posse. Like less than easy. <laughs> I can guarantee that. All right, and thanks for joining us from the floor of Interop ITX. Talk to you next, CTO Advisor, CTO Dose. You can follow me on the web, thectoadvisor.com. You can find CTO Doses at ctodose.com. Talk to you next, CTO Dose.